Prince Kansas. Pat Crakes uh, joins us now. Pat, thanks so much for taking time out and hopping on the show. I know that uh, move in is uh, kind of like a DEF CON 2 situation all the time. So I appreciate you breaking <laughs> away uh, and, and talking to us today. Yeah, it, it's actually move out to the adult apartment. Because oh, she good. got a job with the medical system she wanted. So, but, so we're not moving in. She graduated in May. But yeah, it's still, it's still, you know, it's a lot of work and everybody expects me for some reason to let's pick everything up and lift everything up. So yep. that's fun for me. Look, I, I've stayed in some pretty crappy apartments for a one more lease just because I didn't want to move. So it's it's not it's not it's not the lowest stress environment. So the the Pac-12 is in is in trouble. This is not new news, but it is uh, more immediate and uh, problematic now that Colorado's on their way to the Big Twelve. If they were having trouble finalizing a media deal with ten teams in the fold, how much harder does right. this get? with nine teams, and you don't even know if you're in the room and everybody in your conference is negotiating in good faith wanting to be with you? You know, um, well, it doesn't get easier, right? But mm -hmm. it's, it's a little hard to kind of see how it could get much harder. The one mm -hmm. thing the nine schools have going for them, is a lot of the value inside that conference is driven outside of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of schools that, that are a decent fit to replace them. But, you know, there's no way to say that this is good. And, um, and, and certainly for the Big 12, I was telling somebody a couple weeks ago, it, it, even if nothing ever happens, if nobody moved to the Big 12, the Big 12 still won. Because there's a brand perception, there's an energy level perception, there's, this, there's just a landscape kind of, you know, the way they're presenting themselves. They're on offense, they're growing, they're vibrant, they've got the right kind of advisors, they've, they've got the right leader. So they were going to win anyway on that. Getting Colorado, um, you know, uh, helps them, right, from a long-term perspective. I'm not sure that it really changes the massively the economics for the conference or its long-term proposition. But if you're looking ahead to three or five years when there's going to be some more realignment, probably on a massive scale, because by then, hopefully, the, the thing that drives all of us, right, the, the great economic disruption that's going on behind us and media distribution will be somewhat settled. Um, there'll be another round of realignment. Having your conference together or more teams is is a good thing, and I think that's what Brett's looking at. And I think the Pac-12 has to look about that, too. I mean, they really need to go themselves go on offense and um, take a look at trying to figure out a way to keep themselves together in some some formation so that on the other side, you know, they have the college football playoff expansion. There's that chip to play. There's, there's, there's a place for them as a group of schools to kind of negotiate how – the landscape's going to look outside of the Big Ten and the SEC. Like you said, this isn't necessarily a, a game changer uh, in terms of like the, the program itself that's coming in, but uh, how do you view this from Colorado's side? I mean, when you heard the news and it was official, despite all of the rumors for months and months, when you heard they were actually making the move, what was your initial reaction, and how do you view that from the decision that they decided to make here? Well, I, I, I have for a long time, right, so this for the past year, um, there's just been so many that rumors and and sources and confirms and things that weren't that didn't pan out right. Um, but my my opinion about Colorado is that there seems to be something something just about the way they felt about this. There's something very Colorado about this. There's something unique to their relationship with the conference and the people that led it that drove this. And um, they just kind of decided they had had enough and they left. The other schools are tied together a little more closely historically. And, and I, I'm still, there's all sorts of details guys about this move. Um, they're going to get 31 million. There's been about 27 different ways. They're going to get that 31 million. Um, I don't necessarily discount any of those ways. And I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't, I just don't believe that I know exactly what the composition of how those economics come together. Then there's anybody else who joins and how their economics come together. I mean, Somebody tried to present to me the idea that Fox and ESPN would be on the hook for an open amount of pack, you know, Power Five schools. To which I just thought that was, you know, hilarious. Like, right? so, you know, you add two hundred and fifty million dollars worth of costs with, you know, nine, ten schools joining. Why doesn't the Big Twelve just absorb the Pac-12 then? So it's more complicated than that. Um, I I feel like it's great for the Big Twelve. I think the Pac-12 is not good for them, but at the same time, they probably can recover from this. But they're going to have to. They're going to have to actually show some cards, and they're going to have to make some moves, because it's time for them to kind of show that they're making progress. 
uh, or, or they're going to risk somebody getting scared and making a, a, maybe a mistake or doing something that happens out of panic, which is never good. And, um, they, that just, that, that could be, that could end up with a windfall for somebody else at their expense. That, that's a lot greater than Colorado. For months, the, the PAC 12 has been saying the media deal, granite rights expansion in, in that order. Why yeah. can't those live in a Venn diagram where they happen almost at the same time? Well, you know, they, they, they could be, right? So one mm-hmm. of the things about you have to give the PAC-12 a little bit of credit is that mm-hmm. they've kept everything quiet. Now, maybe there's nothing to keep quiet, right? I, it's not my understanding that, that that's true, guys. Um, but that doesn't mean my understanding is 100% correct, right? So it, it could very well be that the partners that have talked to them said, look, we're going to expand. You know, we're going to, uh, we're going to do, so this is going to happen one, two, three, but then very quickly. Um, there could be a reason why they've helped, why, why maybe somebody doesn't want to consummate the deal. There could be, there could be some people that are still some small stickling points. I mean, we, we don't know that, 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 that they won't do that all together. And we also don't know what's going to happen now. I have to believe that that's some kind of impact in some way, unless they were standing on something that was really good and, they just don't, you know. It's going to work out for them. That that they know that we don't know that. I don't. I don't really, you know, buy that. But you have to. You do have to present yourself all the possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. So I. I don't know that they have to. That they're not doing that. I, I think that if you're looking at partnering with them as a media company or a distributor of some type, uh, you have to assume that that there was going to be some kind of expansion. There had to be some kind of conversation about that. It's, can't believe nobody brought that that wasn't a conversation so uh i i I just i just don't know how much it's going to impact the people they probably are talking to what i think it does do is it probably brings down them closer to the lower range of what their value was um but i don't know that it that it craters it um matter of fact i don't i don't think it craters it i think if they can all stay together they could probably get on the board and this is this is not about catching the sec or the big 10 this isn't about catching even the Big 12. This is about survival. By the way, for the Big 12, it was that too. Mm-hmm. For the Big 12, it was about survival as well. And everybody's just trying to delay and get themselves through the, this maelstrom of an economic landscape, which is making it hard to pay for all this content, and getting past the college football playoff extension for another round of realignment in a new kind of economic environment uh, where you have some chips to play to kind of be a part of a new, of a new system where the Big Ten and the SEC are going to be one and one, you know, one A and one B, but there's probably room for a really strong number two, and um, and you want to be in that group with that number two. So from uh, their standpoint, when they're talking to their TV partners, say like, "Hey, we lost, you know, Boulder, Denver, however you want to classify that." Can they just simply say, "But hey, here's Dallas and here's um, San Diego," and does that just they swap each other out, or does that cause any kind of a delay? I guess that's where I think a lot of us have confusion yeah. about the order of things. And like you said, you would think that the partner would know, like, hey, San Diego State's probably coming if the, the numbers add up. So do they just swap out? Is there now you've got to redo some things? How, how does that sort of work with the, the, on, the offloading of one team and the potential onboarding of others? So, so it can work something like that. But remember, the distributor or the new partner is going to say, well, you lost Denver, right? So it's a negotiation, right? So – it may be that they're both talk. You talk past yourselves a little self in this, but the first thing is you've got to address Denver, right? You say, well, I'm going to address it by expanding to Dallas and to San Diego. Well, you know, the distributor. Well, that's not exactly the same thing because, you know, whatever, right? And you negotiate through it. Eventually, I do believe that given the market sizes, um, that there's a way to balance out the, the the technical loss in homes. Not that that's extremely important, but. You know, I do think San Diego State offers the Pac-12 something in Southern California. I think entry into the Dallas market is valuable. Um, and so you, but you, you, you kind of go past each other on, on negotiating because you are trading things, right? And you have to see the other person's point. Well, you lost one of your schools and Denver's an important market. They come back, well, yes, we're going to add these schools. Well, they're not the same value. How do you get to what the same value is? Uh, maybe you lose a little value because of it on the front end. Maybe you gain some on the back end. Um, maybe you keep it flat. But it's not like I think it's going to be a giant hole for the Pac-12 if they can add someone else. And I will also say that I think the nine schools that are still in the, I guess, 
it's hard to tell what to call the conferences now anymore, guys. It's changed. Yeah. You know, conference math is really, really bad. Um, you know, the, 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 you know, the pack, what we've got now is the, you know, the pack nine, the, the pack nine, a lot of the value in the pack nine, most of the value that came from the pack nine is still there. Right. It's like, mm-hmm. it's not like there's a radical shift in value for, for with Colorado leaving. It's, it's, it's a disruption. It changes a little bit. You can add something back. But um, the core value of that conference, if it stays together, right, which I, I think it will, um, is, is still was always there because the schools that really drive that value in the markets, was, it wasn't Colorado and it wasn't Denver. So where did the Pac-12 start to veer off the road here that got them to this point? Well, I think the big difference is that um, when Brett came in and became commissioner, um, he he kind of recognized and felt that, that he was in a crisis situation. And his agents at Endeavor, Karen Brodkin and Hillary Mandel, confirmed that for him. And so they said, let's let's treat it like a crisis. They, Karen, um, I know Karen and Hillary, um, they understand this whole economic disruption background thing. And they said, look, um, you got to lock down the folks you got because you need to get on the other side of this. Some people are not going to get on the other side of this if they're not careful. This is about survival. So you need to go early to ESPN and Fox and say, look, um, you know, uh, we're going to, we would like to do our deal now. And remember, you know, everybody was telling them, oh, hold off because there's the streaming trillions out there from Amazon because they want to collect these sports teams like baseball cards, these sports leagues like baseball cards. Throw that overboard. Let's survive with the partners we have. That was smart because he locked everything down by doing that uh, with his high quality partners that may struggle through this system, but they're not going to go away. And then it allowed him to basically focus in on the, the conference's image and going on offense, right? And look, if we can get somebody, great. Um, we've got a good deal. Let's see what we can get in this era of disruption. Meanwhile, the Pac-12 has a new commissioner that comes in who's well thought of. And he says, look, our deal expires in another couple months. Um, these partners are good to us. We expect them to maintain our part, be our partners. Let's, uh, let's just follow the process. By the way, that's not illogical, right? But he didn't, nobody around him really understood, I don't think, or, or somehow they, that this was an existential crisis for them as well. And, um, you would think that L, uh, that USC and, and UCLA leaving would have, would have done that, but, I also think there was always a belief that conference has believed very heavily um, that 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 uh, streamer was going to just bail them out of this. And if anybody knows what I have been saying publicly for a long time, I don't know that any of these streamers are all in on anything. Mm. And right now, you know, the price the, today, um, Xfinity left NBC and Fox to go to uh, the CW, which is owned by a station group called NextStar. They NASCAR was talking to Amazon. Amazon wouldn't pay the hundred some odd million dollars for the property, so it's not like uh, that was. It was evidence that they were actually going to bear, you know, uh, kind of dig people out of this hole that they were in. But um, I think some of that attitude may have. That's my speculation, but it may have still been there because in the Larry Scott era, I think there was a lot of feeling that a new new players were coming on the scene and they were going to turn the table over. And this that's a revolution, right? And we haven't seen a revolution. What we've seen is an evolution. And that evolution um, is, is not, it doesn't, you're not, these old people, these old, these old uh, partners are evolving and they're not radically changing the system immediately. It's painfully slowly evolving and the PAC 12 didn't realize that. So it's what the big 12 did right. And it's what the PAC 12 just didn't do because they felt the right thing to do was to follow the process. And it was a moment where you don't follow the process and they missed it. So, we know that uh, the Pac-12 is trying to gather itself now. We know that the Big 12 is basically sitting there like uh, like buzzards, just waiting to see if somebody else can probably <laughs> picked off. I mean, that's pretty clear. But we've also heard you know talk about another pivot that they could make uh, if, in fact, the Pac stays together as is. And, and one of those, uh, Patrick, is, is UConn. Uh, that's been a hot rumor that that's a Brett Yormark project. That that's something he's very interested in, and they're still kind of working through that, I suppose. But from a media standpoint, is this just something that doesn't really would have really any effect whatsoever or is there some value to Connecticut's the East Coast you know what have you uh, with the Huskies and, and a potential Big 12 partnership well I, I think the Huskies do have value they certainly have value in the college basketball part of it the problem is 
that's 20% of the value of the overall deal, right? Um, most of these deals are driven by football. So um, there's there's value there. There's a reason why pay TV distributors probably have to place that, you know, have to pay attention to the fact that Connecticut is is in the conference in, in those areas. There's some question in my mind about how far that goes. I know that when, um, when we did our deal with the Big East, um, the idea that Connecticut would come back was kind of baked into the thinking. It was a process to think about that. And um, they definitely added value when they came back into the Big East, right, um, to play basketball. Um, but this is a very different thing. So, look, I think adding them gives them a national conference. you got three time zones. Um, there's That's a lot to like. I think if you look ahead, right, to that kind of three- to five-year period I keep talking about where we have a little more visibility on how everybody's going to be able to pay for all this stuff, um, having a, a group of schools like Colorado and UConn added to the, to the conference gives you just more kind of chips on the table to figure out what kind of a, what a merger can look like or how a deal can look like to kind of put together a, a third super conference. So that, that's kind of more like a long-term play. It, value today, you know, if they're going to get $31 million right away from media partners, I, I go back to thinking like, well, without the football, are they really worth $31 million? Um, I'm sure there's a model somewhere that says that, but I don't know that I believe that. So I'd have to learn more about how all this works. But uh, and, and we, like I said, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. And I, I get sometimes conflicting information from people who I talk to. Um, and so, it, it, but at the end of the day, I feel like UConn's a, a setup for the future in many ways. And I like that move. Um, uh, but um, it's far from certain that that's going to happen. Because again, I don't know where the, somebody may have signed off on paying $31 million for Colorado. I don't know that there's this open-ended, this like, Let's write a check for thirty-one million for anybody Brett can bring in. If that's the case, why doesn't somebody just go to to Apollo and say these networks are on the hook to write us thirty-one million for every school we add? Lend us a billion dollars, and we'll go break everybody's uh, grant of rights that we can. Break up the ACC. I mean, nobody's come to that conclusion to do something that bold yet, which tells me it's not so simple as everyone gets a thirty-one million dollar check if they join. Pat Craigs, Craigs Media, former senior VP of programming at Fox Sports. Pat, thank you so much. Uh, pro tip on moving. It's not uh, a problem to just throw out stuff you haven't looked at in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting my 20, uh, you know, 22-year-old daughter to agree with me on that. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Well, good luck on all that. Thanks for yeah. hopping on. Uh, enjoy Lawrence for the next couple of days while you're there. I will. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Pat Craig's uh, always great to have him on. Uh, We're going to go right to Grayson. So 